How can you design a highly symmetric form from flat pieces that join at right angles? That's the question I ran into when designing this sculpture, Spaghetti Code. An interesting interplay of art and mathematics arises because I wanted to use laser cut parts with pinned mortise and tenon joints, but laser cutting technology can only cut orthogonally to the material surface. So to fit snugly, my parts would have to join at 90 degree angles. The first shape one thinks of with orthogonal planar components is the cube. But to be visually engaging, I wanted to make something much more intricate and something with icosahedral symmetry. As a sculptor, I found this to be an interesting design constraint. As an applied mathematician, I apply math to art, I had to stop and think a long time. Let's first address a question I had been asked. How can all those joints be 90 degrees when I see equilateral triangles? The person asking knows that equilateral triangles in the plane have three 60 degree angles, not 90. But that's irrelevant, as we're not working in the plane measuring angles between lines. We're working in space, measuring the angle between planes. One idea is to cut off the corner of a cube to create an equilateral triangle from bits of the face planes. These strips are each orthogonal to its neighbors, so they could be joined with 90 degree mortise and tenon joints, and they clearly make equilateral triangles. And if I wish, I can take a curved path between the same endpoints, making a curvy triangle using orthogonal planes. So this shows that using the face planes of a cube, we can make designs with orthogonal connections that don't look boringly cube-like. But I wanted more intricacy, so let's next consider the symmetry aspect. The Spaghetti Code sculpture has icosahedral symmetry. That means it has the same rotational axes as an icosahedron. If you rotate an icosahedron 72 degrees, that's 360 over 5, about a line that connects opposite vertices, it appears unchanged. There are six of these five-fold axes. Similarly, there are ten three-fold axes, each connecting the center of one face to the opposite face. And there are also 15 two-fold axes, which connect an edge midpoint to the opposite edge midpoint. These same 31 axes are the symmetry elements of the dodecahedron. But here the five-fold axes go through the faces and the three-fold axes go through the vertices. Here's an icosahedron and dodecahedron together in dual position, which shows their relationship and how they have the same arrangement of axes. My starting point for the sculpture is just this set of symmetry axes. You can imagine constructing planes orthogonal to each five-fold axis, a unit distance from the origin, then taking the intersection of the half spaces defined by those 12 planes to construct the dodecahedron. Similarly, to get the icosahedron, we can intersect 20 half spaces defined by the family of planes orthogonal to the threefold axes. As an aside, I should point out that the icosahedron and dodecahedron also have mirror symmetry, but I'm only using the rotational symmetry for the sculpture. Another option is intersecting 30 half spaces based on the twofold axes. This gives the rhombic tricontahedron, which is made of 30 rhombi. It happens to be my favorite polyhedron. All these families of planes provide a set of canvases that I can draw on to create symmetric sculpture with planar components. I can select which families of planes to use and move them in or out as I like. For spaghetti code, I chose the planes of the rhombic tricontahedron and the planes of the dodecahedron. I'll explain why in a minute. For now, just to get familiar with them, consider that at one set of distances, this gives what's called a truncated rhombic tricontahedron. Don't confuse this with a soccer ball. For comparison, the soccer ball is a truncated icosahedron. Every vertex is identical, incident to a pentagon and two regular hexagons. In contrast, notice the truncated rhombic tricontahedron has some vertices with three hexagons, which implies they are not regular hexagons. The distance from the planes to the origin doesn't have to be what you see here, as that doesn't affect the angles between planes. Sliding the planes in or out is a pure translation, so it's a free parameter for me that doesn't affect the orthogonality properties I need. So now let's return to the question of the many orthogonal planes. You may be familiar with Euclid's construction of the dodecahedron. He starts with the cube and adds a roof to each face to make the dodecahedron. If you haven't read Euclid, go read it. It's been a classic for 2,000 years. We're going to go in the opposite direction. Let's start with the dodecahedron and choose eight of its vertices that outline a cube. Let's begin by asking if this really is a cube. You can see that each cube edge is a diagonal of a pentagon. Since the pentagons of the regular dodecahedron are equal, 
the diagonals are all equal, so these 12 segments that look like a cube's edge are equal. But are they really squares? How do you know they're not rhombi or non-planar quadrilaterals? If you take a physical dodecahedron and look straight down at an edge and hold it by the four points nearest to that edge, but not on the edge, um, then you're holding these points that I claim are part of a square. And it's easy to see that there's a mirror plane. The dodecahedron has mirror symmetry left-right, the mirror plane through that edge, and also a mirror plane orthogonal to the edge. So this point generates a set of four points by reflection in two perpendicular mirrors, uh, and that means it generates a rectangle. These points have to be on a rectangle because of the two mirror symmetries. And we already know that they're equal lengths, so it's a rectangle with equal lengths. It is, in fact, a square. By rotating the dodecahedron about a five-fold axis, we find five such cubes. Here, each is shown as a different color. Now here's a puzzle. What's the shape of the space inside all five cubes? That turns out to be a shape we've already seen. It's the intersection of the half spaces defined by the 30 planes of the cube faces. These 30 planes each lie under a dodecahedron edge, so they are the 30 two-fold axis planes, which we already saw produce my favorite polyhedron, the rhombic tricontahedron. So each rhombus here is orthogonal to four other rhombi, the rhombi from the planes of its own cube, which are colored the same here. This gives us a symmetric arrangement of many orthogonal pairs, but they are not fully connected. There's no path of orthogonally connectable planes that connects one cube with any of the other four cubes. A sculpture using just these planes would separate into five separate parts. To understand how the dodecahedron face planes give us more orthogonalities, let's go back to this cube in the dodecahedron. On the left and the right here are two cube faces which we know are perpendicular to this cube edge. Now this dodecahedron face contains this cube edge, so this face plane is also perpendicular to the cube face on the left and on the right. By symmetry, when we include all five cubes in the dodecahedron, each dodecahedron plane will be perpendicular to ten of the cube planes. So with these two families, there is a fully connected graph of planes connected by orthogonality with 60 pairs just among the cube faces, 5 cubes times 12 edges each, and 120 more orthogonalities between a dodecahedron face and a rhombic tricontahedron face. 180 pairs in total, which is plenty of connections for me to have all the components of the sculpture hold together. This is where the math ends. It provides families of planes with many perpendicular pairs. I can solve for the lines where the planes intersect to be sure my parts meet other parts at these locations in space. And I can ensure that whatever I draw on any plane is replicated by all the rotations of the icosahedral symmetry group onto its entire orbit of planes. After that mathematical setup, choosing the plane's distances from the origin and drawing interesting curves on those planes is where the art begins.